We're going to design an automatic controller for vehicle velocity. Now with standard cruise controls, you might have, for example, a set point, and then your velocity is going to decrease as you go up hills, or as you go down hills, it's going to increase, and the gas pedal is going to automatically adjust to compensate for the changes in velocity. So there would be the gas pedal, here's your set point, we want to try to keep and that that is your actual velocity or your process variable and so we're going to try to design a controller that's going to meet our set point and possibly with changing set points as well so if i have my set point changing let's say i have an autonomous vehicle that needs to follow a car in front of it then uh, the set point might be changing so we're going to first of all derive the uh, from first principles uh, fundamental relationships of uh, between what the is happening in the car and the velocity it's going to be a simplified version of that we're going to use that as a basis for generating a step response and then we're, we'll also obtain PID tuning parameters so let's just go ahead and do a list of things we're going to do first of all we'll generate a simulation the next thing is obtain first order plus dead time parameters. And then we'll get PID uh, tuning, PID uh, tuning parameters. And then we'll simulate, uh, simulate PID. So this is going to be very similar for other cases where you're trying to um, develop a proportional integral derivative controller for your system you may do these same four steps. But let's get on to uh, the, okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you the problem statement first. Okay, we have this uh, self-driving car, and we wanna range from velocities from uh, zero to 25 meters per second. And in terms of miles per hour, those are the values. And we're gonna adjust the gas pedal and um, that's going to create uh, you know, the electric current to the motor, uh, to the drivetrain, applies a forward thrust from the wheel, contact. So we have a very simplified model for this. And we'll also have regenerative braking. We can go from negative 50% to 100% on the gas pedal. Negative 50 would mean that you're you know, slowing down, you're regenerating uh, through the braking. And we're going to go through uh, momentum balance, first of all. Okay, the... the um, the derivative of mass times velocity is going to be a summation of all the forces on that body. And this is going to reduce down to something that looks like this, where we have the mass times acceleration. Okay, the uh, derivative of velocity with respect to time is going to be equal to a forward. Okay, so this is going to be my uh, vehicle here. Okay, it's going forward. The uh, thrust forward is going to be equal to Fp times u. That's my gas pedal position. And the thing that's going to be slowing it down, okay, is going to be this one half rho a c d v squared. Okay, so just a drag, drag uh, due to the velocity of the car. And as we um, you know, go faster, that's going to increase with the velocity squared. Okay, so here's some parameters here that we're going to put into our system. We have the vehicle mass. We're also going to have some mass of passengers and cargo. And then you also have, uh, you know, this drag coefficient is 0.24 density of the air and the cross-sectional area of the vehicle. Then we have this thrust parameter as well, 30 newtons per percent gas pedal. So with 100% gas pedal, we're going to have uh, I guess that would be 3,000 Newtons. Okay, so we want to design this controller uh, as well. We'll go ahead and uh, develop a simulation first, but just keep in mind that our output of our controller, our actuator, is going to be this gas pedal position. We're going to have a controller set point, and that's going to be our desired speed in miles per hour, kilometers per hour. And we have a measurement. We have a speed uh, speedometer, this measured velocity. And then we also have a disturbance variable, uh, such as hills, wind. Uh, you also have this load right here that we can change and uh, simulate the performance on if this cruise control is going to do well 
with a lot of passengers in it and with very few passengers. So there's going to be a difference there. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and uh, fit a step to this. Okay, so we have all the information we need to, um, in this first case, I'll go ahead and move this over here. Okay, let me go back to my problem statement right here and uh, let's develop a step response now so first of all I'll need numpy this is going to be in python uh, numpy will also need matplotlib to be able to plot some of the values and scipy will need the ode int the ode integrator so first of all define our model our vehicle is going to be velocity and time those are going to be the two um, mandatory inputs to for this uh, ODE int. And then we also have these optional ones, these optional arguments, the U value, the gas pedal, and also the load. So we have these uh, via the velocity, time, gas pedal, load, just a little bit of documentation there. Uh, drag coefficient, density, air, cross-sectional area, this is our thrust parameter. Okay, and then our vehicle mass as well, which is going to be 500 kilograms. And we'll calculate and return the derivative of the velocity. So that's what's required for ODE int. There is our equation. This is our momentum uh, balance that um, we basically just had to take and isolate dv dt on the left hand side. And so we divided by m on the right hand side. Okay, and remember m equals the, the mass of the vehicle plus the load. Um, you know, any additional cargo or passengers. Okay, I'll return dvdt, and then I'll set up a final time for the simulation, 60 seconds. And I have, I'll just simulate uh, every second, so 61 time steps. And uh, there's my delta t. I could have put one there as well. Okay, and then I just go time steps. I use lin space to go from zero to 60 with the 61 steps, and it sets up uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to, you know, 59, 60. Okay, so there's just a vector of time spaces. And then I want to simulate the step test operation. So I'm going to have my step, I'm going to have zeros uh, initially. I'm just going to initialize that with a, a vector of 61 zeros. And then from 11, uh, I guess this, is, this would be uh, 12 on, um, it, I set it to 50 for the gas pedal. Okay, then we have our passengers, cargo plus load, and we have initial velocity. Now just store some of these results. VS is just going to be used for plotting later on. And let's go and simulate with ODE. And so I'm going to just cycle through each of the time steps because my U value could be different at every time step. And I'll also set that up for my PID later. Okay, and first of all, I just want to say U equals step I. So I'm just extracting the gas pedal. Um, and then I also want to clip the inputs. So just in case I gave a gas pedal of 150, um, it's just going to clip it to 100. And if I gave something like negative 60, it would clip it to negative 50 for the regenerative braking. Now this next line is this ODE int. So that's this is where I'm integrating my vehicle model, starting with the initial condition V0, which is zero. And I'm just going to integrate it for one delta t time step. The model doesn't depend on time, so I don't need to go uh, you know, time i to time i plus one. I could do that. Um, it would give me the same answer. The args equals, these are the optional arguments, these are the gas pedal, and the load. So the just the gas pedal might be changing each time step. I'm just going to take the last value for my next V0 value. The V0 is going to be my initial condition, so I just integrate one time step forward and then take the last state value for velocity and just feed that in as my next initial condition on the next loop. And I just store that. Okay, so that's basically it to simulate our vehicle. The main thing was just defining our vehicle model and then using ODINT to solve that. Now I'm just going to plot that. I'll have a subplot with the velocity and um, I'm also going to put in, you know, I want to target 25 uh, meters per second. That's going to be my, my target set point. And um, then I'll also have a, a, another subplot with just my gas pedal steps below it and then I'll show it.
Okay, so let's go ahead and simulate this and see if we can come up with our first order plus dead time model. And um, okay, so I'm going to move this. I'll move this right over here. Okay. Okay, and then I'll just open this up with IDLE. You can also use um, other editors as well. Uh, you can use Python 2.7, you can use 3.6. Actually, let me use 3.6 for this. Make sure I've got this one installed correctly. Okay, and then when I run it, um, let's go ahead and see the response. Now, this one, it might uh, be, okay, it looks like I don't have SciPy installed on this one. Let me do this with 2.7 instead. I can also use uh, Spider or Jupyter. Okay, so there it is. There's my um, response. Now, um, I want to maybe get values that are closer to my desired set point. So my linearization is a little bit uh, better. So let's just go ahead and decrease the gas pedal just a little bit so that uh, I get something that's closer to the region of operation. So I'm going to come in here and um, let me just go ahead and resize that. And so instead of stepping to 50, let's go ahead and step to something like 30 and see what is uh, going to be the effect of that. Okay, so it's a little bit closer. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Let's go down just a little bit more. Um, you know, I don't need as much gas pedal there as I, um, you know, I just keep it down to about the region of interest um, and I'll go 25 okay 25 and then run it again okay so that's a little bit closer maybe I could have gone down to like 20 or something like that okay and then I'll go ahead and save this just to be able to put it on my desktop okay and then I'll grab that and copy it. Let's go ahead and just import this in here just so I can look at it. Okay, and go ahead and paste. All right, so I'll make this just a little larger. Okay, so I'm going to do a graphical fit for this uh, for sort of plus dead time model. Um, so first of all, look at where the step happened. It happened right here. And the very first thing I want to do is look at my delta y and my delta u values. And then I'll come up with kp, and that's going to be delta y over uh, delta, uh, delta u. Okay, and that means that this is going to be about, um, I had about a 30 kilometer per hour change in, uh, I guess this would be meters per second right here, meters per second. Uh, change in the velocity with a 25% uh, uh, gas pedal. Okay, so that's going to be my gain, or it's going to be about uh, just a little bit over 1. Okay, uh, so I'll just say 1. Point, uh, okay, 1.2 or so. Okay, and that's going to be meters per second per percent. You don't have to be uh, super precise on this, but just a you know kind of this ballpark region for gain. Okay, the next thing I want to do is look at the time constant or delay. Um, the delay. This is going to be my uh, theta p. This is how long it takes for the system to start responding after the initial step. So you can see it starts responding right away. I have very little delay there. Now, if you had something like a you know, internal combustion engine, it might be a second or two between when you hit the gas pedal and when you see the car velocity really start to respond. So I'm just going to say that's a zero seconds there. Okay, the next one is I look at, um, you know, where I get to one minus e to the minus one. Okay, that's going to be one time constant. Uh, and that is equal to 0 0.6. Three, two. So if I look about, uh, you know, 60, about two thirds of the way there, which is about right here. Okay. And that time is 30 seconds. So that means that my, after my delay, I had zero delay, this time period is going to be my time constant. 
So that's about 20 seconds or so. Okay, so we have my first order plus dead time model right here. There it is, kp equals 1.2, uh, theta p equals zero, and tau p equals 20. And so I've got, um, okay, and then the next thing I wanna do is, is plug this into some uh, tuning correlations and come up with an initial PID tuning parameters. So now I've characterized the system with this FOPDT model. Then what I do is I come up with PID tuning parameters. And these are gonna be three tuning parameters. There's gonna be KC, tau i, and tau d. Or sometimes you can write those as, um, you know, p, i, and d parameters. That's also common, where this p equals kc, i equals kc divided by tau i, and d equals kc times tau d. Okay, so just reformulating these three into P, I, and D parameters. So you see both of these. We're going to use typically uh, these three right here, and then just put them into our PID equation as such. So let's go look at the PID equation right here. This is our uh, proportional term, our integral term. Okay, and then we would also have a derivative term tau d times the derivative of the error, but we never really do that. We'll cover derivative in the next lecture, next homework assignment. So we typically do kc tau d, and then the derivative of the pv with the negative sign right there. Okay, we'll cover that one later. We're just gonna clip off that derivative term and just use a pi controller. And in chemical, uh, processing units, that might be 80%. Uh, most people don't, well, it's you can use a derivative term, but it's sensitive to you know, measurement noise and some other things. Okay, so we're just gonna use the PI controller only. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> in uh, discrete form, okay, because we often just sample, we never really have a continuous signal of air but we have an error that's recalculated maybe every second. We'll use a summation instead of the integral. And then uh, this dt right here just becomes a delta time. And then we just sum up the error. Okay, so that's gonna be our equivalency for discrete controllers, which is, you know, most of the controllers nowadays are discrete because they're digital. We're gonna use some of these tuning correlations. This is the IMC, um, these are IMC tuning correlations right here. Uh, and so you have a choice of aggressive, moderate, or conservative tuning. And you would just calculate TC this way. Use TC right here, and then calculate your KC value. And then tau I is just equal to tau P. So let's use the moderate tuning. And so our tau c is going to be equal to one times tau p. And then our uh, kc, okay, so our kc is going to be equal to one over kp times uh, tau p divided by the theta p plus tau c. Now this one was zero and this one is equal to tau p, so we just have kc equals one over kp, and then we also have that for our tau i value. Okay, so those are the two tuning parameters that we have, and you see a lot of times this uh, reduces down to these simple correlations like I just showed. If you have no dead time and use moderate tuning for IMC. There's ITAE as well if you wanna try that. Okay, but we're just gonna use the IMC and let's come back over here. So we had uh, these, these values right here for kp and tau p. So that means that our kc value is just gonna be one over kp, and that's just gonna be one over 1 1.2, and there's meters per second per percent, and then tau i is gonna be equal to tau p, and that is equal to 20 seconds. 
Okay, now we have our starting PI controller right here. And so let's go ahead and simulate this. Let's go ahead and put it back into a, a script. Um, okay, so here I have my, uh, my velocity. Let me go ahead and put this over here so we can see these uh, tuning parameters while we work on it. So we're going to go ahead and add um, you know, a couple things in here. Uh, we'll just, um, first of all, change the number of steps to, you know, 300. We're going to go a little bit further out instead of just 60 because we want to see multiple step uh, changes. So I'll change the final time for the simulation to 300 seconds and the number of time steps to 301. Okay, now I'm going to go down to the plots and, um, you know, just put in my set point store. Okay, so I'm going to uh, store the set point. First of all, it's going to be 25 meters per second but I'm going to be uh, changing that. Okay, so schedule a set point, changes in set point. So at 50 seconds, I'm going to uh, have set point equals zero. And then if uh, I get to 100 seconds, then set point is going to be 15. And then I'm going to have at 150 seconds, set point is going to be 20. At 200 seconds, set point is going to be 10. Okay, now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is come in here and set up my, um, things I need to store for my uh, PI controller. Actually, let me do this. I'll put this over here, and then let's just watch this um, you know, PI controller equation as we're developing this. Okay, so here's our discrete form, and this is what we're gonna be programming in. I'm just gonna put in my KC value. I'll just put in a value of three right now. We'll change that. Uh, tau i, I'll change that to 20 as well. I have my sum for my integral. I'm just going to start that out as 0. So that's the summation of the air times the delta t. And this is going to be my air. I'm going to store that just so I can plot it. This is my integral of my air. I'm going to uh, store that as well. Okay, now I'm going to come down back into my loop and just put in my air is going to be equal to my set point minus my velocity. And I'm just going to store that so I can plot it. And then my sum of my integral, it's going to be uh, the sum of the prior integral value plus the air times the delta t. So I'm just going to add that in and just continually sum the integral. My u value, now this is my, this is going to be my pi controller. Okay, it's going to be equal to my u bias. It's whatever my gas pedal is when I turn it on. Plus, um, it's going to be my kc times my air plus, and then I have my Kc divided by tau i, those are my two tuning parameters. You could also lump that into just an i parameter, and then times the sum of the integral. So there's my pi controller right there. I mean, that's gonna be my uh, equation that determines the value of u. And then I need to add some anti, what's called anti-reset windup. So if the controller saturates, I take away the, that summation that I just added for that step. So I just added in, um, on line 60, I added in air plus delta t. And then if I'm greater than 100, if it's asking for more than 100% gas pedal, then I'm just going to take away that integral term. Now also if I'm below 50, negative 50, I'm going to take away that integral term. So it avoids the integral term from winding up. And that's called anti-reset windup. Okay, I'm just going to store the integral. And then let's do some plotting here. Um, I'm just going to add some things here just to add the gas pedal back again, the air, and then also the integral of the air. Just so we can look at those. Um, and uh, let's come back up here and just do one thing. I'm going to change this to uh, 20. And then we'll change this to, uh, I, I think it's going to be 1, 1 divided by 1.2. Okay, so there's my Kc value. That's going to be my, those are going to be my starting values for Kc. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and open this up again with IDLE and run it. Okay, so let's look at the performance here. You can see that it's um, it's taking a long time to get to the new set point. So this was kind of 
intermediate, you know, not very aggressive control. But you can see the gas pedal is adjusting there on the right. And we are meeting the uh, velocity set point. You can see the air and also the integral of the air as it um, accumulates. But let's make this car just a little bit more, uh, you know, we want to make this a high performance vehicle. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, increase, I'm going to increase uh, this KC value. Let's just go ahead and double uh, the gain. Okay, I'm going to double that. And let's just see the performance now. So you can see there's uh, just a little bit of overshoot that's happening. It goes above the set point. And, um, you know, when we're talking about performance of controllers, let me just uh, mention this one thing. Um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, this might be, this is how we talk about a controller. We have things like, you know, when you have the set point, this distance right here is going to be the rise time, how long it takes to first cross the set point. And then we're also going to have some other quantities, like here's my, uh, o my overshoot. Okay, so I'm going to write A and then B. And then I also have a C right here, a, a distance above that set point. And so I have a decay ratio, which is going to be C over B. An overshoot, which is going to be B divided by A. And then we also have things like a uh, settling time. Uh, when I get within 5% of the new set point. So that would uh, be a settling time. Okay, time is going to be when it enters that band and no longer goes out of it again. So that would be this time, settling time, right there. Uh, gets within 5%. So there's a couple metrics that we can talk about when we're looking at the control performance. So let's go back there and let's see if we can get just, um, you know, a fairly good rise time, maybe within the course of uh, less than 10 seconds, and then a good settling time as well with not much overshoot. We don't want to go over the speed limit set point. We just kind of want to go right to it. So um, let's go ahead and make our integral just a little bit, um, I'll make that just a little bit less aggressive there, and I'll make my, uh, my controller just a little bit more aggressive. Okay, and then run it again. And then let's talk about our performance here. Okay, so here is uh, just a little bit of overshoot. You can see that kind of in this uh, region right here, a little bit of undershoot, uh, but fairly good uh, rise time. It gets there within, you know, from zero to 25 meters per second. It gets there, um, you know, within about 25 uh, seconds. So fairly decent. Uh, we could even, you know, turn it up just a little bit more. Let's just go ahead and, you know, for the high performance individual. Okay, maybe they want, uh, you know, five times that nominal gain. And then we might have something that looks like this. Okay, so you can see that the gas pedal is going all the way to 100% for a brief period of time. So, I mean, that's going to be like, you know, somebody coming off the line really uh, accelerating fast. Okay, but you get to the, uh, the new set point, you know, maybe within 20 seconds or 15 seconds. Okay, so there is the simulation of the, um, this is our vehicle, and we've designed a PI controller for it and then tuned it as well.